Good morning. Lord bless you all this morning. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for the time we have to be together. Pray that you give us wisdom. Help us to be able to take advantage of the opportunity and time you give us to learn of you and to do your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we're in Matthew chapter 3 today. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John himself was clothed in camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then Jerusalem, all Judea, and all the region around Jordan went out to him and were baptized by him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, Brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance, and do not think to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children of Abraham from these stones. And now even the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water into repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, and he will burn up the shaft with unquenchable fire. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and you are coming to me. But Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so, for thus it is fitting to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came out of heaven, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. I think one of the most uh, important parts of this chapter to me uh, over the years that I've read this passages where it talks about bringing forth fruits meet for repentance and in uh, the account of Luke the people even ask him what they are to do and in Luke chapter 3 John answers that question so let's go there and read read just a little more detailed account of what what that is commandment entailed. So John is preaching exactly what we just read. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. And we're in Luke chapter 3 verse 9. Therefore every tree which does not bring forth good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And so it goes on to say, so the people asked him saying, what shall we do then? And he answered them, saying, He who has two tunics, give to him who has none. And he who has food, let him do likewise. The tax collectors came to him to be baptized. And they said, Teacher, what shall we do? And he said to him, Collect no more than what is appointed for you. And then the soldiers asked him, saying, What shall we do? And he said to them, Do not intimidate anyone or accuse falsely, and be content with your wages. I think in uh, King James it says, do violence to no man. So here we have exactly how this was happening when people were coming to John to get baptized. They weren't just going over and just getting dunked in the water. They were actually, they were actually learning how to live, learning how to take advantage of the time that God has given us to, to be the way he wants us to be. 
And that's what repentance is, is an opportunity to change our ways and to do God's will instead of our own. And it's just a blessing to consider that every day is a new opportunity to learn of God and to learn about another area of our life that we can do better in and be more like the way God wants us to be. And that's what we can be thankful for. And for the boys' lesson, we can just uh, look at uh, examples throughout the Bible where people actually uh, repented and became better people and what they actually repented of, the things that they actually changed in their lives that made them better people. Okay, you can uh, stand up and say your memory verses or your lesson from last week. Sorry. Lord bless you all. We were supposed to ask our parents um, what we could do better in and I could do better with being diligent in my work. I could do better at um, uh, keeping barn doors closed so that they don't swing in the wind. I used to do my chores so you can please me. This week I asked my dad what I could work on, and he said I could work on listening right away. Like, like when I don't think it's quite the right thing to do, I tend to pause and wait a little. But I need to just do it right away and do it right. So I'm working on that now. I asked Dad what I should work on. He told me that I should work on getting along with my brother. And I tried it this week, and it, when I tried, it worked out all right. But when I just didn't really care and just kept on doing whatever I wanted to do, it didn't turn out very nice. So I need to keep working with that. This week, we boys kind of forgot to ask our dad until it was too late. So that, that in itself shows that, that I need to be more more uh, faithful and, and taking taking what what people say and doing it. My parents want me to work on pushing through when it's hard. This week I asked my dad and he said that I could be more helpful around the house. Just helping around the house and so that that's a good good thing I need to do. My dad said I should push through even when it's hard. I really need to work on being more responsible and doing things without having to be reminded. I need to work on getting along with my siblings. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't know what the assignment was a little bit ago. And I was, so yeah, if I would have asked, that probably told me, yep, a bunch of people at our house usually during the week, just at, the, at night and stuff. And, and Instead of bringing ourselves down to their level, we should make them bring up to our level and be a better person. I need to be more diligent in everything I do and say, be a better person at it. I asked David uh, what I should work on, and uh, he thought for most of the day, and then at night he said, uh, you ready for your assignment? And I was like, yep. I thought, well, am I ready? <laughs> but anyway, uh, he said uh, you need to work on resilience. And he said it's, it's probably not a, a word you're familiar with as far as working on as a virtue. But he just he told me uh, to be resilient is to uh, to be able to uh, quickly and promptly make adjustments when your plans get interrupted because uh, somebody wants you to do it a different way or plans change or whatever, things change. And uh, so I worked at that this week and was really encouraged and blessed with it and realized that it is important to be flexible and to uh, just roll with the changes.